Uh, good morning, everyone. Very nice uh, to meet you indeed. Yeah, I'm, I'm Ian, uh, the one with the two eyes. Uh, I work here at uh, James Cook University. You know, we're incredibly lucky, uh, I think, to live and work in such a fantastic uh, part of the world, incredibly beautiful. Um, I'd like to get to know you a bit. Um, so how many of you have got children? How's, okay, one? One child? Two? Three? More than three? Well, they are the light of the world, children. Um, okay, uh, I have uh, three children. This is Niall. Niall's my youngest child. He's 26. He was 26 this uh, September. Uh, Niall lives in Scotland. Um, he, he is an amazing person. You, um, you might actually say, 26, I don't look like I'm old enough uh, to have a 26-year-old child. But that's what happens when you work in universities. You always look young. Um, so Niall, Niall is 26. He, he is uh, a, a cement engineer. Uh, that, I would have thought, was pretty easy. It's just sort of mix cement and sand and you create concrete, but actually he designed cements to go down the wells of uh, drilling oil for oil and fracking, and it's an incredibly difficult thing to get right. And Niall is one of the world's experts at de designing cement. The thing I, I love about Niall, though, is he's incredibly caring. He's, he loves cooking. And he also loves fixing things. So he spends a lot of his time fixing his car. He usually gets cars that need a lot of work done on them. And he sits there with his smartphone, and he just uh, uh, looks, at, looks at how to solve things, and he, and he fixes them. So Niall, he's, uh, he's, a, he's a treasure, an absolute treasure. This is my daughter, uh, Keely. She's a, she's a pocket rocket, so she's 31 years old now. From she's actually badly dyslexic, didn't do very well in school. Got some of that from her father, and um, she loves uh, horses, loves animals. She now uh, runs one of the biggest uh, horse livery yards in Scotland. So she is there breeding Clydesdale horses, and she spends her weekend doing this stuff, competing in three-day eventing. Um, this is her, her horse, Thunder. She's got another one she's just bringing on who's four years old. She's highly competitive like, like her, her dad. Uh, a lot, she's got a lot of her, her dad and her. As I said, she loves animals, and uh, she spends a lot of time training animals. So this is her dog, Vinny. So Vinny, Vinny is a Staffordshire uh, Bull Terrier, terrier a Staffy, and uh, she can get him to balance these cookies on his nose for half an hour. He, she can go off to the shops, buy something, and come back, and he'll still be there with, a, with the biscuits on his nose. When she says, OK, he, he basically thumps those um, biscuits up, and he catches them all in his mouth. So he actually is a, he's a video star, is Vinny. So, um, so both Keeley and, uh, and um, Niall live in Scotland. So this is uh, my son, uh, Callan. So Callan, um, he would have been uh, 33 this year. On the uh, 10th of September 2011, on a dark, wet, windy night in Scotland, he chose to step forward off the ledge of a car park and end his life on a railway tra track. Uh, 11 floors below. Uh, he had suffered for many uh, years with mental illness. Now, I've been in a lot of conversations with people uh, around people uh, taking their own life, and it is not unusual for me to hear people say, wasn't that individual selfish? Wasn't that individual cowardly? Wasn't that individual thinking about their family and friends when they decided to step forward and remove themselves from this world? Now, as someone who uh, has suffered from uh, mental illness myself for many years, I can say that 
the choice of days and months and years before that to stay alive was a brave choice. I can understand why Callan made the decision that he made, but he was brave in those days before when he was suffering from mental illness and decided to stay alive for family and his friends. So Callan, as I said, decided to take his own life then. And often in the conversation I have with people, people say they're sorry, it's a terrible thing. And it, the, the conversation sort of en ends there. But Callan's life should not be defined by his choice to step forward on that day off that car park. His, his life is defined by the fact that he chose to live for the 28 years before that. And that he was a person. He was not a moment in time. He was a person who lived and contributed. He took, uh, he took uh, his, his life in his own hands, but he also uh, lived uh, a life that was full and uh, and important. So ask me about Callum. Don't end the conversation in the moment when he chose to step forward off that car park. Um, the, so so Callum, uh, he, he was an incredibly bright kid. He was very, uh, well, he was well loved by, by all around him. As he was, when, when he was young, he was actually put up in school because he was uh, really ahead of everyone else. At the age of about uh, 11, he started to get acne, caused a great deal of uh, problem for him in terms of his own self-image and his, his view on himself. But the thing that he was really keen on was understanding his mind and understanding uh, uh, the world around him. So he spent a lot of his, his time uh, as a writer. He got a, a, a degree out of um, the University of Liverpool and uh, he chose, after getting his degree, his honours degree, to become firstly a dustbinman, uh, so that he could get time when he had finished emptying bins to, to write. He then became a postman again, so he could get time to write later on in the afternoon. And so he spent a lot of his time writing. Writing was the important thing. So when Callan chose to take his, his life, we. Uh, set up a, an award in his name. So this award is under the Scottish Book Trust, and it is for writers under 35 years old to write uh, short stories and, and poetry. This award provides them with mentoring to uh, be able to, to take on uh, their writing as part of their career, which I, we know that Callan would have loved to have done, but he never got a chance to do, and we want his memory to carry on in supporting other people to do that. So I'll just uh, give you um, a quick uh, look at uh, one of uh, Callan's poems. I'll just let you read it, and then I'll, I'll come back to our conversation. So, coming back uh, to our conversation, there's um, three points that I'd, I'd like to leave you with that will help people like me who have been affected by um, someone close to them taking their own life, particularly if, if it's uh, a child or, or um, someone very close to them in the family. The first one is that the person's life is not defined by the moment that they choose to step forward and take their own life. The second is that for every day that that person with mental illness lives before they choose to step forward is a brave day. Getting up every morning to go to work, to meet with friends, to uh, engage with society, it takes a huge amount of bravery to overcome the voices that are in your head, the pain that, is, that you feel. The third thing is that I want you to ask about Callan. I want to talk about my son, the life that he led, what he did, how he made a difference to so many lives. 
talk about the person. It is not that moment that they chose to end their own life, which is the thing that defines them. It's the life that they led before that. The, so, as I said, the, you know, that question, that simple question that there is uh, around um, how many children have you got? To save people the embarrassment or the, the difficulty of a conversation of, with someone who has uh, experienced someone taking their own life near to them, or a child taking their own life near to them. Um, I could deny his existence. I could say I have two. But no, I don't want to do that. I want to engage in the conversation, and I want to, to move us beyond the moment in time that Callan, Callan chose to take his own life. So to finish off with, I'm, I'm going to read a, uh, a poem that I wrote to Callan. So I wrote this poem to Callan two years after, uh, to the day after he chose to take his own life. So um, to Callan. When I first held you, your breath fresh, heart beating, new life into a soul so unique. My son, the wanderer, the poet, a world to discover, to understand what others could not know. When I last held you, taut against my embrace, your heart beating its last few beats into a soul troubled by what you knew. Little did I know that when I next touched you, your skin would be cold, your heart still, your soul evaporated into the air that I breathe. It's been a pleasure to talk to you today. Um, thank you very much indeed.